crap. Mother's Day is just around the corner, so for today's video, I thought that I would show you three quick and easy DIYs that I think any mother would love to get for Mother's Day. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use a pizza pan from the Dollar Tree, some sandpaper, I got mine from the Dollar Tree, this tin Hello Word that I picked up from Pop Shelf, some various colors of chalk paint. I did not use the celery and I didn't use the red acrylic paint, but I did use the crimson, the malachite, the ink, and the white some twine, a jot permanent marker, and a graphic illustration marker, various red and green ribbon that I had in my stash. I have lots of different shades and lots of different sizes, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I needed to do was take my sandpaper and rough up my pizza pan. This is going to help my paint stick to it and it won't pull off as I put on the different coats. Once I got it roughed up, I used my Waverly white chalk paint and I painted the whole front of this, being careful not to get any on the back. I put a really good coat on and then I'm just going to sit it aside and let it dry completely. I'm also going to paint my hello word. I was afraid that it wouldn't show up well against this white background with it being the tin color. So I used my ink chalk paint, gave it two good coats and left it to dry. Now that my paint is dry on my pizza pan, I used my ruler and I made a line about halfway down it all the way across. I did end up erasing part of it and I made a wiggly line that looks like a bite was taken out of my watermelon. Then I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in crimson and I'm going to fill in the bottom part of this. Now you notice as I go around my curve, I'm being careful to keep it on the inside of that. I didn't want to go up on the top part of that curve because that's going to represent the white part of the watermelon. When you look at a slice of watermelon, you have that green rind, then you have that little white area, and then you have the meat. And that's what I'm trying to represent with the painting on this. We're going to give this a really good coat of our crimson paint and we will leave that to dry. Now I'm going to take that malachite green and I'm going to paint just the very top edge of my pizza pan. Again, I wanted to make sure I didn't get it on the curved edge. I only want it on the top. This is going to be the rind of my watermelon. I gave it one good coat and left it to dry. While our pizza pan's drying, I'm going to cut my ribbons. I cut them at about eight inches. I cut two of those red ones, and then I thought, wouldn't it be cute if I added some seeds onto this as well? So I took my permanent marker and I drew out some little seeds all over my red ribbon. Then I just colored those in, and I think this turned out so stinking cute. Now I'm going to finish cutting my ribbons down to the eight inches. I used about three different colors of green and four different colors of red. You use whatever you have on hand. I didn't want to have to go out and buy anything. And then once I got them cut, I'm going to layer them on top of each other, fold them in half, and I'm gonna cut them in an angle, giving them a dovetail. I do this to all of my thicker ribbons, but then once I got to those that weren't quite so thick, instead of dovetailing, I just cut those at an angle. Now we're just going to stack these up in a crisscross pattern. You're gonna put two green, two red, however you want to lay them. Once you get all of your ribbons on there, you're gonna gather it up in the center, take a piece of twine, wrap around about three times, tie it in a knot and trim it off. And then once you fluff it up, you have a cute little messy bow. Now that my paint is dry, I'm going to add some seeds to my watermelon. I'm just gonna use my pencil and trace in some, and then I'll use my permanent marker and color those in. Now, there is no right or wrong way to do this, and there's no perfect amount. I probably did add too many seeds to my watermelon, but I thought it was cute. You're just going to make a little oval and fill it in. 
Now, before I put my bow on, I did want to put a hanger on, and I had got some paint on the back of this, so I'm just gonna use a piece of sandpaper and clean it up real well. I can't stand for my backs to look messy. Then I'm gonna take a piece of twine, fold it in half, and tie a knot. That's gonna be my hanger. I'll flood it with some hot glue on the back, and then I'm gonna cut a little piece of ribbon to go over the top, and this is just gonna hold it in place well. Now I'm going to add my word and my bow. I'm going to use some of my Fix-All Adhesive for the Stronghold and some hot glue for the Fast Hold. I'll put the Hello right there to the side. Then I'm gonna take my messy bow, put a little bit of hot glue on the back and glue that on. And with that, this project is finished. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you'll be notified every time we upload new content. We upload videos three days per week, offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, paper crafting, hauls, and craft show information. We just know you'll find something you'll like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this little wood decor piece that I got from Goodwill Outlet for 29 cent, some burlap and lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree, some Waverly chalk paint in white, a glass knob that I got from Hobby Lobby on clearance, my drill, some wood glue, some decorative upholstery tacks, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I needed to do was remove that hanger. We aren't going to need that. Then I'll take off that label and remove the fabric that is on top of this. Once we get it cleaned up, I'm going to use my Waverly white chalk paint and I'm gonna give this a really good coat on the front, the back, and all the sides and leave this to dry. Believe it or not, I'm not going to be distressing this piece. Once our paint is dry, I'm going to find the center on the top of this block and then I'll use my drill to drill all the way down so that I can put my knob in. Now we'll just put some wood glue into our hole and then I'm gonna use some hot glue on the base of the knob and stick it down in there. Now we'll use our burlap ribbon and I'm going to glue one side of this down and trim it up. Then I'll pull it across the frame as tight as I can get it and we're going to glue the other side down and then we'll trim that down as well. Now I'm just going to use two of those decorative tacks. I'll put one in each side of this and then once we do that, we'll put our photo in and this will be ready to give to mom. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this little wooden plaque that I picked up from Goodwill Outlet. When it was at the regular store, it was 89 cent, but since I got it at the outlet, I only paid 29 cent for it, and I think it'll be perfect for this project. I'm also going to use this half terracotta pot that I also got from Goodwill Outlet for 59 cent. Now, if you like these little pots, I did check on Amazon and they sell them there as well some Sculpey air dry clay and a silicone mold. I got my mold from Amazon. This French label design that I printed out. I will put a link to it down below if you would like to have a copy. Some Mod Podge, some cornstarch, 
various florals from the Dollar Tree and Walmart, some floral foam, some super glue fix all adhesive, some Waverly chalk paint in white ink and ballet slipper pink, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. The first thing I needed to do was remove this little bow that was on the top and get that label off. Then I took my sanding block and I just went over this really well to remove that um, sealant that was on there and to take some of the paint off. Then I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in ink and give this whole thing a good coat. Now this is going to do two things. It's going to keep that design from seeping through once I put my lighter colors on there and it's going to give me a good base for my distress painting. Once my ink was dry, I took my Waverly white chalk paint and a chippy brush and I went over this with a pretty heavy hand. I wanted it to look distressed, but I also wanted it to be kind of solid there in the center. Once I got that finished, I also painted my little terracotta pot with my white chalk paint and my chippy brush. I wanted this to look old and chippy like it had been left out in the weather. Once my paint was dry, I did decide that my pot was going to blend in a little too much with my background. So I took my ballet slipper pink paint and my chippy brush and I went over this and gave it a pink coating. Now while that's drying, I am going to take my clay and I'm going to make a decorative piece for my pot. I put some of my cornstarch in there to keep my clay from sticking. Then I take a little bit of my clay and work it in my hands till it's pliable and I'm going to press it down into my mold. I take off as much as I can with my hands then I use my little scraper and scrape off the rest and flatten this out and then you can just flip it over and peel it back and you have your little design. I left this to dry for a couple of hours and then I used my fix all adhesive and my hot glue and attached this to the front of my pot. This is such a cool way to update these terracotta pots. Now I'm just going to use my white chalk paint and go over this to take away that off white clay color. This is just going to make it blend in a little more. And then once that was completely dry, I took my pink paint and went over the top of it just to bring out that detail and to give it a little punch. Now we will attach it to our plaque. I'm going to use some of my Fix All Adhesive on there for that strong hold. And I'll use a little bit of hot glue for the fast hold until that sets. We're going to put it right in the center at the bottom. And then I want to put my little label on the top. Now, I didn't want to cut this out because I don't like those harsh lines that you get from scissors. And my favorite way of doing this is what they call deckling. I take some water, just plain old water, and a paintbrush, and I paint around my design, letting it soak in. Then I just start tearing it. And if you go around, it's going to leave those little wispy edges that blend in instead of having those harsh cut edges. Now we'll just take some of our Mod Podge and put it on our plaque and I'm going to spread it out pretty thin. Then I'll put my design right on top of that and I'm going to go around those edges just making sure that it's sealed down real well. Now I did feel like it stood out just a little too much so I took my white chalk paint and went around this and kind of blended it in and then once that is dry I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper and just go around that and make it all blend. Now the last thing we have to do is decorate this. I'm going to put some of my floral foam into my little pot and then you're going to put your favorite flowers in. I started off using these ranunculus and these little white roses but at the end I felt like they just blended too much with the background so I do end up changing this out to some pink roses. You use whatever goes with your home decor that you like. Once you get those in, this project is finished. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday morning. Bye y'all!